bags are packed, are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road Riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other way everyone welcome back to children of airte we're so excited to see you here tuesday <laughs> night's rule um thank you all for being here as usual adam who's our sponsors it feels like a long time since we've played so it has. Uh, yeah know, we're, we're, we're very excited about this um incredible sponsors as always idol champions of the forgotten realms thank you so much for the support you can find an electrum chest code on the overlay or bouncing around in chat we have die hard dice who has gifted our cast with Silas's Psychic Solvers. Ooh. Silas's Psychic Solvers. So that one is Perfect. down. It looks like Neb's next week. Um, so, you know, that's who's on deck. But um, but uh, thank you know. very much, uh, Tall Halfling, uh, for a, another list here. If you have lists, um, I am getting several from folks. But, you know, if you have lists and I like yours better, I might go with yours. So feel free to continue <laughs> to, to send those. Uh, and, and, and thanks for that. Um, and uh, finally tonight, we'll hear the dulcet tones of Sirenscape because Epic Games need epic sound. I'm Adam Bradford, CDO at Demiplane, and tonight I am playing Silas Sorrell, your dimensionally displaced magical super fan. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Alicia Marie. Um, you can find me on socials at Alicia Marie Body. I'm a professional custom artist and RPG performer. Getting ready for San Diego Comic-Con. I have a lot of things going on there. I'll put it all on social media. And then after that will be Gen Con. But first, Yay. San Diego Comic-Con. Get that out of the way. Um, tonight, I am playing Bruce Armstrong, attorney in an igloo. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on the socials as at DreamWisp, streaming on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. And that should be starting back up again very soon. I am almost done with rehearsals and things. Um, uh, and I do all sorts of things that you can read about on the socials, but uh, please check out Dreams and Machines by Modifius. Um, it's a fantastic new game system and world that we have coming out, and it's really neat. Um, and tonight, I am playing your friendly neighborhood troublemaker, Maeve Morgan Flynn. Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content manager over at Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. I'm on the socials as Obo Lauren, and tonight mm -hmm. I'm playing Carol Carolyn Nebula Stern, who's just happy to have a mirror and a shard and friends <laughs> she's just going to ignore the fact that we no longer have a train <clears throat> and hello everybody i'm hope lavelle you can follow me on the socials at the hope lavelle um i am playing miss robin beckett tonight who uh is just happy everybody's okay because <laughs> that was harrowing yeah i'm gonna have to jump in before Deborah, I'm so okay. sorry I had an no omission worries. because I don't want to oh. mess up your smooth, buttery flow into the game <laughs> itself. I'm going to get this uh, an announcement out of the way. I was scrambling to get here on time and I forgot this one, but it's a big one. We are going to have a special game at San Diego Comic-Con. So what? Alicia reminded me when she mentioned Comic-Con. So <laughs> if you... Uh, yeah, if you happen to uh, be able to attend uh, SDCC this year, uh, we put an announcement out on the Demiplane social channels um, earlier today, but there um, is going to be a special, um, you know, uh, looking into the first night, we were all on the train kind of thing. We've got a couple of special guests. So this will actually mark the first time that uh, most of the cast is gonna be together in person to play this game. We've played other games privately and otherwise together, of course, but, uh, but this is gonna be uh, a pretty fun time in the RPG theater that SDCC is uh, is hosting this year. And uh, a lot, lots of great games in that theater uh, throughout the entire convention this year. And uh, we're really happy to be a part of that. So if you're attending, please uh, check it out. Come say hello, all of those things. And also just wanted to be sure to share 
that if you're not able to attend that show, then there will be a VOD for that um, uh, that will be available at a later time. I'm not exactly sure when uh, because they're, they're kind of <laughs> they're, they're being really iffy about like a couple of weeks. And that normally does not, uh, you know, pan out as, as actually two weeks, but, um, but we are going to get that up as soon as we get access to it on the Demi Plane YouTube channel. So you'll be able to catch that up. And then one last thing, because I know that we've already gotten questions about this. Um, this is going to take place out of sequence with the core critical path of the story that's happening in these episodes. So I don't want anyone to feel like um, if you don't see that in sequence as to what's going on, that it's going to mess anything up about what is yeah. being played here on Tuesday nights. Uh, so just kind of wanted to throw that part out there. It'll be great for you to catch up to uh, when we do get the video on demand available after Comic-Con, but we'll keep you posted on all those fronts. Yes, I, I, I am a, a storytelling magician and I <laughs> a storytelling wizard and I have figured out how to insert a non-critical adventure <laughs> somewhere in the midst of this story that we can all go do. Um, but oh, you first. Huh? Hope, did you do your... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you did. Oh my gosh, my brain is. Also the, I, well, we'll see. That was the thing is, I was waiting because I was like, "Hope's last, right, hope's last, right?" right? right, right. Yeah. Right. So anyway, <laughs> I am having like short term memory loss or something then because I was like, "Did Adam do the sponsors? Did he say science? Wait, did Hope go?" Like, <laughs> my whole brain is not working. Great, let's play some D and D with a GM who is not fully present. Here we go. <laughs> so welcome all we're back to children of verite we're so excited to have you um this is our 51st chapter if you were here for our 50th last time we did something a little special all of that 50 percent inspiration is gone you're now solely yourselves um so thank you to the players to everyone home to josh let's settle in and get comfy for the 51st chapter of children of verite did you say we were soiling ourselves so so soloing. Oh, <laughs> I, was, I was like, I mean, wow. you do you all what? the time. But... <laughs> I thought she meant we were really scared or something. Oh, God, God. Completely misheard that. Well, we did lose our showers. Yeah, you did. That is true. You have nothing. You have nothing. Everything is gone. You have an igloo and your backpack. Um, and a and a, okay, and a mirror. And poor Pivim, yes. poor Pivim. It was so exciting. <laughs> he, he knew, he knew the joys of showers time. for like a day. <laughs> which which might be crueler than him never having <laughs> experienced a shower ever. Never. Right. Oh, you really, Pivim. you really, this is, you've ruined Pivim's life is what's happened here uh, <laughs> by causing an avalanche. Um, but yes, where we left off last time, um, a number of you were inside the igloo uh, strategizing and having conversations along lines of what you want to do now. Um, and then uh, I think the rest of you were outside sort of babysitting the shard. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, who, who, where do we want to pick up first, inside or outside? Um, wait, well, where do we leave? Like who, I think, didn't... So I think it's Robin. Who's inside? Who's outside? That's <laughs> so it's Neb, Silas, and Pivim are outside, outside with the mirror and the shard, okay. on the assumption that um, Ivy might be able to hear us talking, That's and right. so we've taken that outside and have been talking about how gorgeous things are while yes. everybody Very else is innocuous inside. topics. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, so let's jump to Feruza, Maeve, and Robin inside the igloo, trying to figure out what's going on. What time is it, you guys? Do we know? Oh my God. I knew you were going to ask that question. Literally before we jumped on, I was like, I don't remember what <laughs> time it's supposed to be. Sorry. Okay. I was like, oh no, first question. It is her o'clock. <laughs> Listen, this is why you are a DMing wizard, is because whatever time you say it is right now, it's magically going to be it's that time. It's magically what time it will be. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> so you did, you did. And I believe it was nighttime when you rested. It probably went into a little bit in the morning. Then you went and you did all of the um, the train, the buried train stuff. So let's say early afternoon. Oh, okay. So we have a lot of time. DM wizard. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it. If we all agree, we'll say it's early afternoon. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. 
Well, I guess we're just gonna place the shard today, right? You guys, we're gonna get this done. I don't see why not. I Maybe look skeptical. So. I think we just I, I, I have to look like what? And Maeve, who is like beat up as all heck. <laughs> You're still beat up? Oh no. Oh wow. yes. Oh yes. Oh that's I right. Am, I you am, got oh I am I am I very beat up. I am I am Maeve not looking particularly blue. well. <laughs> she is blue around the gills. I thought she uh, got you right know, there. everything's still a little frozen and that's right. uh, breathing still hurts a little bit. Do we have a fire going here in the igloo? You did, not anymore. Any, not anymore. I think, yeah, okay. I think we made it. <clears throat> Fireball! All right, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Nina, Silas, why did the igloos just explode? What's going on? She's really into this now. I'm going to TPK at the party. <laughs> it's probably going to have fireball. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. so, something that we need to keep in mind is that now... There is no room for Tehrun to be stuck in or, or a train. So what happens at 2.13? Oh my God. That's a really good question. Did we let him out? Is that is that what has come to be? Uh, or is he stuck here. in the train? We should be prepared just in case. Well. And Feruza just sort of looks out of the igloo. I guess we have a lot of time until then, but yeah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. The fact that we took the mirror out of the train, and now this is going to be a different version of 213. Sort of. Kind of. Maybe. Should we be worried? Are you, are you nervous, Robin? Me? No. no. I'm sure we'll be fine. I've been through plenty of things in my life and, you know, nothing like this, but I, <laughs> I, I've learned to stay optimistic. Yeah, I'm trying to stay optimistic, but for the fact that we lost the train. <sighs> okay, I'm not, let's, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Maeve, are you alive? I think so. Do you want Ooh. Silas to look at you? Maybe be able to fix you up a bit. Am I a ghost that no one can look at me? And you're wondering if I'm alive? She's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> I guess we need to decide. Are we putting in the shard here now? So Nev I think we just took can, the but I think we need to look carefully at the mirror now that it's not attached. See if there's anything on the back of it. Or since we haven't had a chance to look at it off of the wall yet. You're right. That's true. And I think we should be careful because we don't know if that room was keeping things in. What? What do you mean by keeping things well, in? Well, this, you couldn't move the mirror before, so there's Wait a chance a that- What? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just <laughs> remember the last time we fought Tehrun on the train and he smashed everything and the train got damaged. But then after 2.13, it was just like, it had never happened. What if we get our train back after 2.13? I like that idea. I'm going to believe that's going to happen. And I'm very I'm optimistic. <laughs> I'm choosing to think positively. The train's going to return. We're not going to be stuck out here in this igloo for eternity. <laughs> Outside, Neb is going to turn to Silas and say, you know, I like the idea of that big bull showing up and just seeing a bunch of snow and no mirror. I think that's going to be real funny. And if I could have been a fly on that wall without it being really, really dangerous, I would. And don't forget, there's some creature that's cutting a path through the woods over there. So sp speaking of that, like Silas, as he's been just kind of circling, mm -hmm. he's getting <laughs> higher. 
<laughs> and I hear <laughs> and and he he keeps like um you know for first of all he's like thinking down to Neb like Neb can you still hear me <laughs> he's doing this like you know and he's like right. trying to test range. the range a little Roger, bit yeah. Yeah. And, Roger still gotcha uh, and so uh and then like once that range which um sorry I think it's like 90 feet or 60 feet yeah. maybe mm -hmm. um once we start getting past that um he is going to I would as well I don't know how loud the wind is perhaps uh, it's 120 feet so okay. I don't know if the wind You're is like super there. bad but but uh he's gonna like yell can you still hear me like even once he st stops doing this he's gonna stop whenever Neb can't hear him okay. but um mm -hmm. but I do want to I don't know how sound carries um but um I do want to like fly up as high as I can and look out vaguely in the direction that May was talking about mm -hmm. to see if I can see mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a very gentle snowfall. It's not super windy up there. Um, you you know, there's a little bit of obscurity as you're looking out because it gets heavier and it's harder to see. But you see a little bit further than what was described looking over that ledge. Basically, just like a, um, a, a path just carved through this vast forest. Um, that is off on that side of, of the mountain, um, as if the trees have just been parted, you know, through, you know, side to side by something that moved, um, you know, moved through them uh, and knocked them over. Um, I'm gonna, but yes, you you have learned your range as well. So you are. Yeah, I'm going to kind of circle, you know, kind of circle down. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, when I get into uh, messaging territory, I'm just going to be like, yeah, Neb, like, it looks looks pretty bad Maeve was not exaggerating like there was something very large again never-ending story rock creature is the likely culprit but but either way whatever it was really really large I'm worried that it's that invisible giant creature that killed all those wolves back at the the mine because it could yeah. knock down trees without issue yeah, and then Silas is eventually going to land, and I I can't remember who had the shard. Ned did. I have the shard, okay. and the mirror I think is just like sitting uh, up ground? against a tree. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and then um, at, at some point Silas is definitely going to uh, get bored, and then he's going to peek his head into the igloo, like, "Hey, um, have we strategized yet? Do We're we know still our next strategizing." Move? Silas, we're still coming up with a plan. Where were you, by the way? I was up. I was flying. <laughs> like, really high. And by the way, Maeve's report about, you know, complete swath of destruction over there near, you know, the forest. Um, yeah. Very, uh, not exaggerated in the slightest. It looks horrible over there. Um, no, Tiffin comes I'm up, exaggerating. Comes up, yeah, Tiffin comes why. up and tugs on your pants and goes, I, I I vouched for what what's what's with the double checking. Wait wait what That's did you what say? I, keep saying. I, I didn't <laughs> understand. Comes and he says I I saw it too. I saw it too. Oh See, yeah 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 yeah. Unless yeah, he wasn't overdoing it. Yeah yeah I mean all all I'm saying is that I am pretty sure that I've seen several things in this place that I'm not exactly sure everyone else saw. So th 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 that's all I'm saying. So ah, strong point from many, many feet away where Neb has stayed with the, the mirror so that you yes. can have this confab. She's going to yell, remind them about the giant, the wolves. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know if you heard Neb yelling out here, but um, she said something about the giant and the wolves and that there was some kind of I, I I can't actually remember that story that she told because she was just really, you know, I could tell she was frightened by whatever happened and I didn't want to think about it at the time because we were, you know, there were other things we were trying to do. Mm -hmm. But um, but either way, like, I think that um, if we're headed toward that forest, mm -hmm. we are going to be in for something that I'm not really looking forward to. But we have no hey. idea what it looks like. At all. Yeah, I, 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 I haven't seen it. And I think Neb even called it invisible, I think is what I remember her saying. But um, the, the other thing, have we thought about what happens at 213 yet? We were trying to figure it out, but we have no clue. But Robin had an, an, an amazing sort of 
idea of what could possibly happen at 213. Maybe the train comes back. Why would the train come back? Good question. Robin, why? It's smashed to bits. Yes, but remember at 213 when we faced Harun, we had got smashed and then after 213 when he disappeared, the train was back to normal. It did. It respawned pretty much, didn't it? There. Like in a video game? You know, like when it's like, oh, I destructed that part of the environment, but now the voxels get put back together and it's like there again. Maybe it's some sort of like time sort of reverses itself or something, you know? So Neb, they think the train might come back. That's what they've been strategizing about in here. <laughs> it's one of the things we're strategizing about, Silas. And it's also one I want to things. mention that you should be careful how high you fly. We have no idea what you could smash into up there. You could hit a pegasus or what if it's like the truman show and it's just there's it's like minecraft you get to the top and there's just like nothing and you can just burst right through wait you mean like a reality tv show yes exactly you've been saying it all along Maeve. i think you're probably right maybe i should try that out no I, i've read way too much uh too many comics song seen song i've sawn too many shows um <laughs> And I know that if I go too high, the air gets thinner, and it's pretty awesome that I can fly now, but I can't go without breathing. So I definitely need to be careful that I don't go too high. And when you call out to Neb, she's not going to yell back at you, but you see she's going to hold up the shard and point at it and point at the mirror and point at it. And oh, Neb wants mirror. to put the shard in the mirror. Right now? Well, I mean, she's out here, like she's got the shard in her hand. She's got a, a grin on her face. And it looks like she's really excited so, to put it in. While the we have you and, and Neb is there, just to clarify, the reason that we ask you to take out the mirror. It's oh, yeah, like, I was so confused about that. Just to clarify, <laughs> it's think about if you it's it's like being bugged. It's as if potentially we might be given someone or something access to all of the information we have. We don't know that we can trust the person in there right so like just Samaritan being careful in person of I'm interest just yeah, saying i got it it might be that jen has played that trick on people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's jen who is jen <laughs> what that, 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 didn't say that. sounds like an Maeve, excellent Maeve, Maeve, Maeve said nothing they've just they've just well, had it had an intuitive sense Silas, <laughs> Silas. there was this one time i had a dream oh, that... <laughs> have have you that thought someone adopted a pet rat that might have been a transformed wizard oh. kept it in their pocket the entire time <laughs> what's that miss robin have you tried talking to IP, you know, we could we could communicate. Has she I, I, cer I certainly can try to, but I wasn't going to do anything until I understood what the strategy was and you're strategizing. So I wanted to come check on the strategizing. All, All right. right. So maybe we take the strategy outside around the mirror now. Here's a question. But then Maeve says that it's like a bulb. She, 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 I think she's saying bug, but it's like, it's like a bulb. Well, I can't bulb. do it. Bug. A bug? Yeah, e that's it. Bug. 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 Okay. Like a microphone. How, 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 how many bugs do you think there are? One, two. <laughs> I know what you're trying to do. Oh, okay. I'm over here thinking. <laughs> and I'll do it just because I know it makes you happy. Tree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like those over there. And I'm pointing at trees all around. <laughs> Well, one thing Maeve brought up. And then I start laughing and ouch. <laughs> mm. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Do you need some additional assistance? Like, that... I thought you I thought you were like alive and you were okay. But if you're not. Then... I am alive and okay. And also in a great deal of pain. Okay. Where, where does it hurt? Everywhere. Okay. And then Silas is going to walk over. It's like, all right, for this good stuff, I've got to get closer ready and then i'm going to kind of put my hand behind her head a little bit and then okay. almost like i'm like trying to uh, pop her neck a little bit 
Mm. Um, I act like I'm about to do that, but then just energy washes out and she kind of flashes for just a second, like, you know, some kind of animation, uh, mm. just a little bit. And, uh, we'll do, uh, we'll do a cure wounds here. And I don't know how damaged you are, but we'll go ahead and, uh, as he said, do I, the real I, I stuff. I would say I'm. 38 out of 40 damage. I would, I would say like <laughs> le less than a quarter of what should be in the correct positions and not bruised is, is in the correct positions and not Got bruised. Got it. Uh, <laughs> so let, let's start with uh, 3d8 then. How's that? Um, yeah, that would be and you can roll that. At, 3d8 plus 5 if you want to try that. Okay. Um, and while she's around, I'm going to say this was that was such a great description, Adam. Uh, when you say she flashes like an animation, I I think she flashes and actually looks animated. Like she looks like a superhero comic oh, book illustration yeah. just for a second. As that it's, energy she, she, it's kind kind of like a glitch in a yeah. potential you know Spider Verse. Yes, your yeah, your exactly like your Spider Verse version of Maeve just appears and then disappears <laughs> as this healing washes over her. I love that idea. Me too. So, so I, I, how, how did that do, though? That gave me 14. That got me up to about half of the things. Are back oh, OK. So, so we need to go a little bit deeper here is what we're saying. Unless okay? unless I will I will say if we are hanging out in the igloo around a fire and there is the time to short rest. Mm -hmm. Is that something we have the time to do? If, I mean, are yeah. we hanging around until 213? Yeah, we should nap. Well, we also want to put the shard in the mirror, but because we don't know what's going to happen, we don't know what's going to happen when we do that. And I don't want us to be caught completely off guard. Oh, that's true. But also yeah. there's some large creature rampaging. Well, Pippin, you know, steps forward and he's like, well, I was resting while you all were dealing with the train. So if you want to rest, I'll take a watch here. Make sure nothing comes up on you unawares. <laughs> That that'd would be, be lovely. Yeah, that'd be great. You got it. So then, why don't you save your the rest of your? Thank you for the for the help, and maybe I can get myself a bit what, more what, well, back listen, into. If, and I start kind of popping my. Yeah, listen. <laughs> if if things place. go down, <laughs> if action happens, I will spring into, well, action, and I will <laughs> heal you some more. <clears throat> okay, that sounds lovely. <laughs> All right, a short rest can happen. You can make a small fire in your igloo that has the you know the hole up at the top. Um, you all settle in. It's nice and warm and toasty. You want to leave the shard and mirror outside. Do you want to bring it in with you? The well, shard. Bring it in. That was going to be my bring question. <laughs> yeah, Piv Piven will set up you know a little spot to sit uh, out front of your igloo. He actually takes out a little like. Um, a uh, piece of like rock arrowhead almost that's quite sharp like it's really been honed to a sharp tip and he's gonna whittle he's gonna sit there and whittle while he he watches mm -hmm. for you whittle while you rest <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> okay you want do you want everything inside then yes are, are, are we is neb bringing the mirror inside that's what i'm asking right now yes I want bring it in and everything yes so we while it's inside, in case it's bugged, we're just, just talking about the weather. I think being careful about sharing all of the information we know and all of the details about, That's really about our plans. Me. I kind of overshare sometimes. What? I mean, occasionally. <laughs> then I'm going to challenge you to try and consciously hey, not. Hey, I, I like that. Ch I, challenge the accepted. Challenge. Yeah, I like that. And I'll hold up my hand for a high five. And he doesn't actually touch her, but you see like kind of like a streaking um, like hand of telekinetic energy that, that smacks into her. And as it hits my hand, it cracks a little bit and I go, oh, that's better. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> and Neb I do look help. better as we're resting. That's a lot yeah. better. Neb yeah. is going to haul in the mirror and the shard and is going to very intentionally prop the mirror up so that the glass is facing the snow, partially okay. because of everything that 
folks were talking about, but also she'll hand the shard back to Robin. He, you've got the best place to put this where it's going to be safe. And then she wants to sit down and look at the back of the mirror. Mm -hmm. Great. That's what yeah. I was gonna um, ask. Give, me, yes. give me a perception check, it check out. first. A uh, perception I'd, check first. I'd love for you, you to roll that, please. You got uh, it. Plus seven. As Neb's coming in, Silas is just going to message Neb, only you can hear this. I just wanted to fill you in. Maeve thinks this mirror might be bugged. So we just need to be really careful about what we say around it. I will not turn into a roach. Um, I'm going to also just write down on a piece of paper. We might also be able to write things down as long as we get rid of them after and don't show the mirror. Got you. Got you. And then okay. I'm going to tear it up and put it, you know. I love the, the amount of writing, whiteboard, mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> drawing on the walls we've done in this adventure. It's very me. It's, I love it. It's very, it very fits my aesthetic. Um, fantastic. So, I may be so, being way overly cautious on this. <laughs> and it. if I am, I apologize to everyone. No, I love it. No, um, so, it. Neb, one thing you notice as you, you know, turn the mirror before you go to inspect the back of it and you place it against, um, you know, facing the wall again like you've seen in the it, you know in the in the maze of ice in you know the walls there it's not reflecting it's almost like behind the mirror is just mist again you're not seeing your face or the rest of this um igloo space and and and, and thinking back to the compartment a that continues to be true, you know, what was there, that it does not reflect the room. It only has this kind of smoky, misty quality behind it. Um, mm -hmm. And even though now it has come with you, it is still not reflecting as you press it against the uh, wall. So now you want to inspect the back of it? Yes, please. Investigation? Uh, Do you want me I to will... roll? Yes, please. Uh, that's only a plus six. Okay. Um, <clears throat> It looks very ordinary to you. As you're looking at it, it, it's, you know, it's just wood. It's old wood. There are places where you can like chip off a little piece of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, little uh, aged around the corners. You can see the the um, place where like the, it's just like a hanging, um, you know, wire uh, where it was hanging. Um, which is, you know, totally baffling because it was stuck tight to the to the wall. Um, but it doesn't look damaged to you. It just looks very old, like something you'd pick up at a flea market. I want to reach out and put my hand kind of on the back of it where I'm seeing this mist where the back of the shards would be. Do I feel anything? Mm -hmm. So there's like a wood backing, right? And then the shards are on the other side facing. Just making sure. So you want to place your hand on the wood on the back. Okay, yes. I, I'd i forgotten that there was a wood backing to it, and I was just yes. seeing... Okay, so yes, on the wood on the back. So yes, kind of... so the, yeah, the, the glass is facing the wall, and then on the back of it, where the, the wood backing is, is where you want to touch? Yeah. Fantastic. Um, you touch it, and it burns you. Oh, not again. Not, not, not to hurt, but it is hot. The is this, was this mirror made out of the same thing that door was made out of? I'm going to reach over as Maeve is tearing up this piece of paper and I'm going to gently reach out and grab a, teared, a torn up piece and then I want to hold it up against the wood and see what happens. You hold it up against the wood, nothing happens. Again, you can feel the heat. Uh, I'm going to do another perception check for you. Okay. Uh, plus seven. Plus seven. Um, you feel the heat when you touch it, but it doesn't emanate. If you hold your hand an inch from that wood, you don't feel any heat radiating off. It is only when you touch it. So when you place the paper on it, it does warm the paper, but it doesn't burst into flames or anything like that. But there's, it's hot just when you make contact with it. Yeah, be careful touching the back of the mirror. It's very, very hot. May okay, and you can um, see that Neb wants to say more, and then like glances at the mirror, and then like <laughs> antsy. She's real antsy now. Mm. 
you know what though we were getting a rest we were doing we were resting and making sure everybody's okay before we we, we do the thing so maybe maybe i'd stop examining the back of the mirror and we do our rest <laughs> is so on the other side yeah is it also wood the backing so the so on the side with the mirror you know, it's it's the frame, and then there's the mirror inset. Where the shards are missing is wood. Okay. And it does look like the same wood at the back, behind it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we all give I each have, other look. I have a of... thing, and I I just am trying to figure out if I can justify it. <laughs> or if there's a way I, I can know a thing that I know. Um, <laughs> and I don't think That's I can, so way. I'm going to just, I'm going to file it away. And that, okay. Yeah, let's get a little bit of a snooze and then we'll talk with Ivy. It feels like we're in like a Cold War era thriller right now. Mm -hmm. This is epic. Mm. It's a hot wood era thriller. <laughs> <laughs> Hot wood cold war. <laughs> Hot wood cold war. It's too bad it doesn't emanate. It would help with the fire, but it's just like right, right there. You know what? I I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. I'm mm, I'm gonna say it because I think it fits. I, here's my justification. If at any point I am crossing over into too much, okay, please stop me. I'll stop you. Go ahead. And I'm gonna justify it by saying fairy folklore talks about things like salt and silver and iron, right? As protective barriers into the world. Um, Here, how about this? Give me a history check, Maeve. Let's see. Maybe we'll put it into Dice's okay, hands. Okay, thank you. you know <laughs> thank I'll, you. I'll bail you out on this one. Give me a history check. Okay. 21. Yep. You absolutely remember this information. You know, okay. you've read. This you know, is the thing that I have been like sitting that. on for months Airport. and months and months. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to. Okay. Um, this is what Lauren and people got frantic texts about. Um, <laughs> sorry, audience. I'm nerding really hard right now. Um, this I think was the audience is probably nerding with you. Okay. Yeah. Old mirrors were made with actual silver in the mirrors. And we never found the silver on the train. And I think that the mirror is lined with silver as a protective barrier to keep whatever is in it out or in. Well, are you saying I, this out loud? I, uh, yes, in a translation that makes sense for Maeve to say it. She's this is writing the information it I am down. trying to convey, and <laughs> I feel like I am happy to have. Robin fill in things that Robin would know with intelligence check history stuff mm -hmm. or like any of this. The the may the part May would know is the folklore around silver. Mm -hmm. If you mention that, Neb will just blurt out, well, the wood is super hot, like it's tall run. And so having a barrier between the two of them, right? So I think that something is keeping things. Well, if the stories that we were told by Ivy are true, then uh, whoever it was that put her in the mirror was trying to protect her, and Talran is making things difficult, and so keeping him away from her, even if it's just in a magic mirror, makes the most sense. What if Ivy is now has now been like jostled loose and and silas is totally saying this with a mirror right there what if mm -hmm. ivy is just jostled loose and then tall run is in the mirror now because you it's like hot right well the wood is i haven't touched the actual mirror part of it but the wood is don't touch that ivy might just be out there walking around well, we'll find out when we put the shard in because we'll be able to see her if not, right? Yeah. Or we'll get eaten. Oh, Feruza, you're muted if you're talking. 
God, ridiculous. I was saying, hopefully Ivy, but what if it's someone else that answers this time? Because we jostled Ivy loose. I mean, have we tried to speak with Ivy? I know we're trying to rest here, but people seem to be getting a little antsy. <laughs> we're not going to get any I'm rest. Very, I'm very antsy, and I'm going to pick up the mirror and turn it around. I, mean, I feel so like just talking glass... to a magic mirror is kind of a light activity. So that the, the mirror part is facing us, and I'm going to stick my head sideways so that I'm looking into it and go, Ivy? You get no response. Um, it's just misty, swirling stuff back there. You'll remember that when you place the shard, you are able to wordlessly communicate with her. At 2.13, you have a minute to speak with her as she is outside of it. Um, she has appeared at other various moments, but really just as like hauntings here and there. You have don't seem to have control over those moments. Mm. Um, you, this is just, yeah, you get no response as you, as you talk to her now. Um, uh, Pivum, overhearing all of this, sort mm -hmm. of slides in. <laughs> he says, you're telling me the back of that thing is hot. Yeah. The what is very, very, very hot. It's oven hot. And this, this man, this, this, this Julian was a, was a scribe. Yes, he could, he could make doors. Yeah. He moves over to it, presses a finger against the back and pulls back presses a finger to the inside of the mirror and pulls back. He says, this side is cold. And he turns to you, Maeve. Young one, I think you might be on to something. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at it. He says, I've only seen one door in my time. I think this might be another. A door to where? Someplace hot. Someplace cold. Someplace Just two I've doors. Never, I've never seen one you could carry around with you, though. If it Whoa. is, this Julian is quite, quite a master scribe. Well, he was trying to save Ivy from the bull. And I'm still guessing that not everything went correctly because this feels like this is not exactly what he wanted. So maybe this is the closest he could come as trapping both of them, but making a barrier between them. If this is a door, then how do we use it? I think we put all the we mirror shards in there. We have to find the place where the, the reflections align where they're in uh, cor correctly in time, right? That is a fascinating theory. Is it, is I'd, love to, I'd love to try it. But I don't know where that would be, so I don't help with that. No, I, I mean, that, that might be true, but it, I think it would happen after we put all the mirror shards in, right? That, that might be like the next step. We've been assuming putting the final mirror shard in will be done and then having to immediately deal with yeah. whatever happens, whatever. but say, if... I imagine that would so, open that would open one of the doors. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if, so if not who? Will was in in fire, right? Yes. Yeah. Somebody else was in a hot... We had... Was some... Um, oh, Silas. Silas's had, grandfather, yes. Was in lava. Oh, and there was desert, too, right? There was desert, uh, windy desert. Mm -hmm. Um... Neb's great grandfather was being pummeled by waves. Okay. Mrs. Beckett mm. was in the windy desert, and um, Harold was stuck in a a mucky swamp. Okay. So it's likely. Okay. That this would lead to. Well, it. To a... Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's true that putting all the mirror shards in there is going to open one and or both of these portals, then our assumption was kind of right that we're going to have to be ready 
to deal with possibly Whatever. one, if not two, rulers at the same time. One of whom I've already locked horns with, and it sucks. <laughs> How are we going to sleep in here with this thing? Well, uh, does anybody speak in their sleep? Does anyone talk in your sleep? Because <laughs> otherwise, no. I think we just cover it back up with the, the quilt that we got. We're going to have to keep it safe. I mean, we can just shift our schedule to be like awake at 2.13 and then go to sleep at other parts of the day. Definitely. We're definitely yeah. doing that. And I think we, we should all to... be up tonight for whatever happens. Yeah. Hey, Miss Robin, this might be premature, but does this fit in your bag? <laughs> Question. Um, how, how big is the mirror? I think it's probably too big at this point. I mean, it's the, the mirror is like, um, I don't know what to say, two feet by two and a half feet, you know, kind of a... I don't think it's shape. going to fit. Sorry. No, that's okay. We'll just have to take turns carrying it if, if the train yeah. doesn't magically come back. I'll let you know if my bag does keep getting bigger. <laughs> <and> bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that our stuff is changing at the same time that we are. I kind of, I kind of want to just like take stock of everything I have just to see if anything has changed. Has, has any of your stuff changed? And Neb kind of looks at everybody else. Well, I mean, and then Fruza just sort of gestures to her axe. And yeah, he just yeah, yeah. changed into <laughs> like a, a power sword. Yeah, axe. I yeah. don't remember my uh, my Swiss Army knife flipping into it. 12 foot pokey thing. Yeah, was well, so, I mean what what was that? Like a trident? Like this is like so you know so and I sort of you try aim it toward the, the entrance. <laughs> I'll take out my Swiss Army knife and I'll sort of as I open different things, mm -hmm. different weapons <laughs> extend out in that sort of midnight starry galaxy, Ooh. same stuff that the letter opener um Ooh extends into um just mm. almost like switchblade extensions um swiss army knife extensions and then they just fold back in that is so mm. cool it didn't used to do that for sure are they all weapons i don't uh, even know what some of those weapons were one of them's like a s'mores fork uh <laughs> s'mores fork yes <laughs> oh, oh you've got a spork fork. in there okay <laughs> just <laughs> nice <laughs> I love no, it. And then there's the toothpick and the mini scissors. And you know, yep. Listen, I always so the, knew the that the mini scissors Swiss... can extend <laughs> if I need them to. <laughs> to hedge <laughs> <quarters>. <laughs> I, I always Jesus. knew that the Swiss made hedge really good army world. knives, but that's amazing. So, I Feruza... even offered Neb, Neb, mm -hmm. your your stone feels warm in your pocket. I'll root around it, and pull pull it out. You know, it hasn't changed in terms of its look necessarily but it didn't used to do the things it used to do mm. that's extra comforting in the cold <laughs> so Feruza, you have yeah. like a um, axe of omens kind of thing going on here oh wow. you know like and and like it turns into something like do you do you know how you can do that you know what and she sort of reaches over for the axe and it's back to being a baby axe again it's only when I'm like ready to fight, I guess, which is weird because I've never been that sort of a fighter. I mean, I was definitely a better fighter in a courtroom than with like this, but here it's all about brawn. Well, <laughs> no. it's like, what but if it's... you do like a magical girl transformation, like straight up, like, you know, She Ra or something like that? <laughs> I mean, first, like... <laughs> first off, that would be great. But also, uh, Feruza, remember the last couple of creatures that we've encountered? You scared yeah. them away. You used your words and your big intimidating presence. So I think they're yeah. both working. Big muscles and a big brain. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you could tap dance, then you'd be a triple threat. Is that how that works? <laughs> you know and then Maeve, anything. you have like a Swiss army or like, I don't know, is that the actual brand? Like it's like a multi-tool or something, right? It's a multi-tool. Sure. Okay. So, and then you can just like, turn things and then there's something going on with the letter opener i saw that at least once or twice it seems to just sort of it, it's just and i pull it out and it's 
right now it's just a small, it's just a letter opener. Um, but when you have seen it before, it extends into a long, thin sword where the, the letter opener sort of forms the, the, the grip of it, the hilt of it. Um, and then part, the first part of the blade and then the rest sort of is that same uh, dark starry material that extends further out um, for the rest of the blade. And maybe there's, there's something kind of the, the, like the cross guard almost um, mm -hmm. yeah. as well. Hardcore. And Miss Robin, oh, you're dude. like, so your bag is getting bigger. Same is so. there, any, is there anything just... else that's like happening? Yeah, are the things in the bag getting bigger too, or is just the bag itself? <laughs> uh, Can we like put food in there and then have more food by the morning time? Uh, it's worth a shot. <laughs> it depends how fast the bag is is growing. It's, it's like I... a jiffy pop. <laughs> that is really weird. Like, okay, so my my axe gets bigger. Maeve's Swiss Army knife gets more intricate and has more weapons than ever before, including a spork. But your bag just gets bigger. And I remember it, it, it shifted uh, style as well, didn't it? It went from more of a yeah, carpet bag be... tote to a backpack. Yeah, thing. like a tote bag, and now it's like a backpack. It has two straps and everything. It's a better weight that, distribution. I've seen that hack on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels like these things are changing along with us, like Silas said. But it also seems like, like because we're upgrading they're wanting to upgrade too, almost? Or, or maybe we're subconsciously doing it. Like and waking up like, in the middle of the night or while we're still asleep, suddenly forging. No. Or uh, is any of your stuff like getting bigger now? Nothing's bigger, but, but my stone just has this nice warmth all the time. Oh, it, it's can, because can, like can I see stone? it? Yeah. Like, it okay? Hand it on over. <laughs> huh. Oh. It is warm. I mean, like, I, you know, this is not like, you know, please don't take this personally in any way, but it's like, you know, Feruza has a little axe that turns into, you know, the axe of omens and your rock is just getting a little bit like warmer. Like, what do you think's up with that? Like, why is your rock not turning into like a meteor? Or You've something? seen Game of Thrones. Well, well, that's well, because she can turn into things. Don't insult the dragon egg. Yeah, no, no, that's what I'm saying. Please don't take it personally. I'm just trying to understand Ooh. because, by the way, like I'm sitting here and none of my stuff has done anything other than get lost in the train. And, you, um, you're, you your flew eye around the sky. <laughs> One of your eyes is a light. That's true. Yeah, but it's and not the my stuff. And uh, and basically, as uh, Silas is starting to do that, like you see yeah. that Silas's hat, the bill of the hat, like starts to just kind of fold down, and it starts to cover basically his nose, and it starts to wrap. And for a moment, he like is kind of taken aback, like he's about to get smothered by something, and he like kind of gasps just a second, and then you see that the hat starts to just kind of wrap around his head. And then you see it starts to grow and grow and grow and grow until he basically has on what looks like a cape or a cloak of some sort. And the hat has transformed into some kind of cowl. And then you see just two little fox ears coming out of the top of the cowl. And then Silas like is looking around and, and is the mirror somewhere close yeah, is, still is the mirror him, reflecting anything? No. Okay, so I can't see anything in the mirror. You can't see anything do, in the mirror. Does any, I don't know what's happening right now. Like, does anybody have something that I can see? You look like I'm, Batman. I'll reach into my bag and I'll hold up a regular mirror. <gasps> Compact. Oh my gosh! So my How stuff did... does this, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and and I or start you like twirling it. around. I start twirling around and the cape is like, you know, hitting people as like in this small igloo. Oh Are my you, gosh. You it's really important happen. to have the spinny cape. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's the only style. kind of cape worth having. I mean, <gasps> Silas, it can't be a coincidence that you were talking about how you don't have a thing that does a thing and then your thing did a thing, right? 
Uh, yeah, but like, is my hat like gone now? I don't know what's going on right now. I Maybe. mean, like, I would trade it for like a superhero suit, I guess. But like, my goodness, like, what is happening in this weird place that we're in? <laughs> can you use your mind to change it back into a hat so you can like go back and forth? Uh, I don't know. I I, I haven't figured out how. <laughs> Well, oh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And like Silas, seriously, like you see him look up um, mm -hmm. and it's like he's looking at something that's not there. And he's like, <laughs> wait a minute. And then as he does it, he's like, oh, yeah, no, that's the right place. And uh, and then all of a sudden you almost hear like uh, mm -hmm. through kind of a minor illusion, like this audible mm -hmm. click. And then the it starts to like whirl up on itself and then it like starts to uncover his face and then it turns back into a hat. I found it. I found the tumbler. <laughs> wow. That was, wow. That was, oh, that was interesting. So that look really cool when you fly. Yeah. yeah you should do that when you <laughs> yes. fly. Oh, I should. Yeah. Yes. I have when no we fear. Super guys. fan is here. <laughs> yes. And I think we also just figured out why you're so obsessed with towels. They that were like, might be it. <laughs> They were the cape that you never had. Well, you say that though, but like my pops, like that's what it was when I went over to his place. He used to have these red towels um, because like uh, I, I only had like white towels at home when I was growing up because my mom was like, hey, the, we got to have the kind that can bleach, you know, or whatever. And But then like pops had like colored towels and every time i would go over there when i was a kid he would like tie it off and i had my cape and so like that might be part of this i think that's definitely part of this you I just psychoanalyze you... me i think oh, Faruza. it's a family of hoopy fruits mm -hmm. and we just had that experience where we saw have you our... never read hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy oh, oh, you oh I, did, I didn't hear what you said i'm so, no like literally I didn't said, hear what you you're said you're a family of hoopy fruits oh yes 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 that's it that's it sorry oh i was so excited i thought i, I was gonna get to introduce you to something no, I, I, I heard it i heard it like tree or something sorry yeah got it <laughs> and we just had that experience where we we i guess came face to face with our loved ones going through something really stressful too so there has to be a, a tie with everything we're going through still to them. Hopefully it's not as bad as what we saw. Yeah. I mean, do we think that they're alive? Like, is that, I mean, are we like aligned on that? You well, all thought I, they were dead already. So yeah. Mine was if like, they are, it's a big win, isn't it? <laughs> Give them yeah. listening again said, oh, you've seen dead people. Well, my my loved one is not confirmed deceased at this time. Oh, my pops yeah. is super dead, and I saw right. him. Well, we are in the veil. Uh, lots of people stop here when they die. Others get here when they're alive, such as yourselves. Really? So they wait, stop they're just here. dead people here? Don't you remember? You've tangled with a few yourself. Are you talking the about the Grimlocks and stuff? Yeah, you said you fought. You fought the the ice, you know, the creatures of the souls that get stuck here. If they're unhappy, they, they lock on to whatever they those were like find. real people. Yeah, the Night of the Living Dead. Remember? Yeah. I, I wonder if like the to... like, things in the mine were people or something once. I don't like to think about the idea that any of our loved ones are currently here in any of the situations that we were talking about, though. I know. And I mean, I I can't say that I knew my great-great-grandfather for most of his life. I, I was very young, and he was very old, but he always seemed happy. He always seemed like he had... He enjoyed getting all of those stories and was happy to pass them along, but... I would like to think that he wouldn't be upset and st stuck in a place like this. Do we think he's, he's the one that gave you your ticket, right? Right, Neb? Yeah. Mm. And and this. 
Oh, gave you the rock? Yeah, it was the last time I saw him. He had just come back from a trip and it was... My pops gave me this hat. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Miss Robbins, did someone give you your bag? Uh, no, I made it. But <laughs> Rob, uh, Harold did give me this hummingbird necklace. Hmm. Seems normal to me, though. Um, I hate the, the, you guys, I have to say something. I hate the sort of correlation that my brain is doing right now with our loved ones that gave us the ticket. And they're also the people that we saw in trouble. I and agree. us not knowing why we got the ticket in the first place. And I'm supposed to go to sleep right now. Well, I don't think we have to go to sleep right now, but Maeve, how you feeling? Eh? Any better? You had a little a bit of a rest? Yeah. Yes. An hour shall have passed in these conversations. Mm -hmm. Are we putting well, this thing in there? I Let's say we get... take it out of the igloo. Yeah, I don't want anything to happen <laughs> to this. This is a special place now. Let's go to an outside. This is outside. the only home we have now. <laughs> so it's now we know better. Three or four o'clock in the afternoon, we'll say. Okay. Kind of, you know, the sun is just starting to go down. It's starting to get dark up here in these northern climes in the winter. I mean, in case anyone is going to get sucked into this, what Pivum thinks is a doorway, I will happily move the shard with my mind close to the mirror where everybody can stand okay. a, a ways back if we want to do that. Good. This is what I like doing. I like thinking because now that we know this place and we know the things that we come up against, we, we can plan ahead now. We can think ahead Filming. about things that could possibly happen. Yeah. I like yeah, absolutely. this. Absolutely. All right, let's do this. And I'll pick up the mirror and haul it outside. <laughs> <laughs> Lean it up against a tree somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All With right, the, the, the glass facing out. Robin has the shard. Robin, you'll do the placing then, right? Well, no, I no, no, no. I, I, you know, as soon as I oh. see a shard, like, I, I don't know, are you getting out of your bag? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was like, all right, just let go of it, though, because I don't want to cut you. It isn't step. any bigger. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it does not grow. That's good to know. We could just Comes leave it in the bag the until it's yeah. the size of two shards, and then we don't even have to go get the last. This is like, Robin, it, it, your, your bag is so roomy. You're just yeah. so, it's so roomy in there. And oh, yeah, it's what a great whatever design. I, whenever I reach in, I just find what I'm looking for. Excellent design. Yeah, I really... <laughs> You, you really found a good pattern for that. Float the shard, kind of spin yeah. it and, and float it over there. And, um, you know, Silas is terrible at puzzles. And so he doesn't necessarily <laughs> know where it's supposed to go. Oh, but no. he does what he always does in a video game and just kind of like keeps Tetrising and, until it like gotcha. fits. All right. You, it takes you, you know, 30, 45 seconds of rotating <laughs> and flipping. And That's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it slides into position. Um, and as it has before, even from this distance, you're what, 15 feet away, something like that? Uh, 30. 30. All right, you are yeah, 30 I'm feet only, away. Just want to make sure. As far as you can see in this in this waning light, you know, and, and Neb, you can see clearer than everyone else. Um, it, you know, that seam seals right up like it always has. Um, you can see now clearly if this final shard is of a comparable size to the others, there's really only one left. It really feels like there's just a space for one more piece. Um, and as you sit there in the silence, the snow still gently falling around you, you see her face appear. This one piece covering, you see most of her face, really just one eye is covered as the rest of it is exposed. And she looks out at all of you and all around and you see her smile wide. Yeah, there is no train, Ivy. That's the I start news. to walk closer. Is, is her smile... <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming, her, I'm assuming it, her, yeah, her it, smile is she's happy to see I cried, like, but yeah. yeah. I will happily roll an insight for you. Um, yeah. I'm a your... plus one. She looks elated. Um, she looks surprised. Um, excited, even. 
you know, she hasn't seen anything but the inside of the train for decades, as far as you know. She's looking at wood. He busted you out, Ivy. Well, the you guys mirror. are far away. She's this like little like postage uh, size face three feet away. Oh, <laughs> at this point, no. like, I'm up yeah. Okay. On, on the assumption that if it was gonna, ha- if bad things are gonna happen, they would have happened. That's at least mm-hmm. what that thinks. Uh, so yeah, she'll move up. It's been a weird couple of hours, days, something. Good news and bad news, though. Like good news. <laughs> she she just looks around, just. Uh, well, we kind of destructed it. Like it, uh, it wasn't our, it wasn't our fault. It avalanche. something caused an avalanche, and the train is no Missing. longer. Well, we know where it is. <laughs> we we have no longer access to it, but we were able to get you at, out, and so yeah. She, Have you she ever been out of the train? her heart and offers her hand forward. Uh, Have you ever it's... been out of the train, Ivy? Since you've been in the mirror? Wow. Well, now so you, you are. <laughs> so she looks would... around and, and you see her lips. It is. Mouth the words beautiful. So I'm guessing you don't have an idea about what's going to happen at 2.13 tonight now that you're no longer in the train. Her expression changes to one of uh, fear, trepidation, as she shrugs her shoulders slightly. Do you think there's a possibility that we have just unleashed Talron upon the veil? She looks around, trying to kind of take in this new surroundings. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Wonderful. My my gut but, says- But shrugs her shoulders again, right? We'll be ready. We'll be ready. My gut says that no, because of the, the back, the back of that mirror is so hot, I think. Oh, hey, Ivy, do you know that the back of the mirror is very hot to the touch and the front of the mirror where we're talking to you now is very cold. Do you know that? She looks bewildered. (laughs) Do you think it is possible that you stay here in whatever prison you're trapped in in the front of the mirror? Do you think that it is possible that the other side, Mm -hmm. the back of the mirror that is hot to the touch could house Talron. Um, she, she puts her fist to her heart, Mm -hmm. um, blows on the back of the glass and writes a J for you. It's backwards. Uh, And she taps her temple. Okay. Julian. Julian, mm-hmm. what do you think? Julian's in the back of the mirror. No, Julian no. thought of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How is okay. him? She, she says, you know, she she doesn't. Um, she you know sort of shrugs as if to say she doesn't know that that's true, but he's smart enough to have done something. Yes, go ahead, Pivam. Question: How is Pivam reacting to Ivy? Uh, you look over at Pivam who is standing, probably still a little bit back, just slack-jawed as he stands there. Uh, Eyes wide, slack-jawed, has never seen anything like this before in his life, Uh, seems lost for words, is just sort of trying to take all of this in. He's so tiny. As the snow falls on him, it's like burying him, you know, minute by minute. He's just eyes on him. He's just just slowly coming up (laughs) around him because he's so little. So we're going to have to be ready at 2.13 for anything because we don't know what's going to happen. She so, looks just frightened. Well, we and that's that's kind of the purpose of all of this is to kind of get you up to speed because there's a good, ch- there's a decent chance we're not going to be able to ask you a question tonight because other things might happen. I don't know what, but 
you might want to be as ready as we're going to try to be. She breathes back. With Is your experience with magical things, do you believe that now that you are not within the confines of the train, do you believe that the magic could still potentially persist where you only have a limited time outside the mirror at 2.13? Or do you think all bets are off at this point? <laughs> First question, do you think that it is possible that the magic is still there that would keep you around for only about a minute? She, she nods. She's not sure. But, you know, she... Her best guess is that, you know, she's still trapped in here. She doesn't feel any different on her side. Yeah, that's what I was trying to... Yeah. Okay. As we've been talking, Neb wants to take a moment and look around, kind of look, starting with around the mirror, but then just around where we are, because the last couple of times that we've talked to Ivy, she's been very clear mm -hmm. about how the longer we have this kind of conversation, mm -hmm. the more he gets wind of it. Fantastic and, perception check. Uh, once again, I would love it if you would please, plus seven. <laughs> you pull your focus away from her just enough to notice that from the back of the mirror behind, just little tendrils of snow smoke are beginning to kind of coil around you all, almost unnoticed, until you fold your attention to it. I'm going to walk up to the mirror and say, okay, be ready at 2.13. <laughs> we'll see what happens. And then I'm going to literally pick up the mirror and face it towards the tree. Okay. Um, as you do that mist, that smoke that was emanating from the back, you can very clearly see now it was sort of oozing from the seams of the wood at the back of this mirror as it dissipates and stops well, misting it. I, I don't know about you, but I think that confirms he's still in there, and we still have to be careful about how long we talk with her at any time. Do you think that Releasing Ivy is going to fully release Talron. Yes, I yeah. absolutely do. <laughs> <laughs> I I would like to think no, but I I think yeah, and I feel like it's that's a better assumption to make because if we're right, we'll be ready as ready as we can be, and if we're wrong, surprise, yay! We don't have to tangle with a bull. Here's one other piece that I think is relevant to this conversation. We know that all of the rulers want to tip the balance. Mm -hmm. Would it be to their advantage to work together for the short term? To try and take the veil and then try and figure out how to sort their own struggles against each other later. You're back to, is Ivy a bad person and wants to ally with Talron? I, by the way, I want to be clear. Like, I think that is a very distinct possibility. I don't think so now. I Maybe one of them wants to ally with one of the other rulers who are mm -hmm. kind of just around, but... The mm -hmm. both of them are stuck in here, and every time we've seen an interaction between the two of them, it has been antagonistic at best. So maybe at one point before the mirror happened, but the way Ivy tells the story, at least the two of them were at odds the whole time. But it's a good thing to think about, at least with the other two rulers, what might happen. So Talon doesn't want us to find the last shard. Wouldn't he though, so he could get out? Hmm. He, the stories that we were told seem to indicate that he was chasing her. Hmm. He was going after her. He was trying to capture control, whatever. Mm -hmm. If that's still his mindset, Mm -hmm. Maybe he's locked into that idea, even though we might be inadvertently helping him. 
This is yeah, or, that's insane. Or maybe we're wrong and putting the shard in won't release him. I don't know. We haven't really been able to have a conversation with him beyond <laughs> conversation with Taran? Yeah. I wonder if I mean if Taran's a ruler, does. unless all of yeah. the subjects don't converse, then it follows that Taran should be able to talk and you know at least tell people what to do or something, right? So, you know, maybe we could try to talk. It's entirely possible that Talron does communicate just in a way that we're not familiar with. Very true. Well, I could um, try to read his mind, potentially. I mean, I haven't tried that yet. You should well, definitely try that. And I'll say the last time we tried to communicate with him, uh, he communicated very well with the top of his head into <laughs> me. So, so I'm just I, I'm looking back at notes from that because it was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pippin's there. Some, he'll start coming out of his trance. You can ask him questions. I have mm -hmm. some questions that we had that I think are relevant to re just to bring our brains back to this. We yeah. were wondering if Ivy might have invaded Praxidike to find the scribe. Mm-hmm. Um. That's one I think we didn't talk about. Um, that goes back to like the where idea. we're thinking Ivy's leaning. Like, is she, you know? Wondering if Steve had to protect all of the rulers, why did Talron attack him? Um, and why was Steve in the mine if he was protecting the rulers? If all of the watches were on the train? So there, there were little pieces of, of the stories that still between Ivy's story and and Pivum's story that weren't lining up. Well, Steve is going to be hard to predict because if his original purpose was to protect the rulers and then you have two rulers going at it, I'd imagine mm -hmm. that that's a complicated place to be. Well, As for Julian... And he clearly loved Ivy. Clearly. <laughs> I, I think maybe... Even if it's just, you know, not like emotional, not um, romantic love. Because uh, we know that she and Julian were at least happy living together for a while until they felt like they had to go back to the veil and had to go back. I'm just and then that saying, all this. I know a thing or two about being in love with someone and not being able to be with them. And I'm telling you that I got that vibe off our buddy Steve. Really? Yeah. I've only ever read about unrequited love. Me too. Well, I hope you never go through it. I appreciate that, I think. <laughs> Sorry, I'm also just looking through my notes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we all um, are. We're I like, mean, wait a second. I think, so, so you know, Pivim coming out of it mm -hmm. can sort of you know, remind what this is and says, you know, so so the rulers if mm -hmm. they want ultimate control mm -hmm. what they have to do, everything was peaceful and fine as long as they stayed in their own world, they had immortality as soon as they leave that, they lose it they want control of Erte but getting there is hard Right. you've heard mm -hmm. from Ivy and Julian's story that she got there and now came back um and that Talron, yes, presumably is going after her because this is this is from Ivy's story, right? And what you mm -hmm. learned, uh, he's going after her because he doesn't want her to succeed, exist. You know, he wants to wrest total control. Is her story. Um, meanwhile, the worlds that they're from are in chaos and rebellion because there are no leaders. Mm -hmm. Do we want to try to talk to Talron tonight when he shows up? Why not? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't know if you want to try that psychic thing. I mean, have you? Are, aren't you? I, mean, I can certainly try certain... to detect his thoughts. Um, I, I was able to detect something from Ivy when she was out of the mirror at that you know sixty second window, um, and as I told you when I did it. I certainly was picking up things, 
Now, understanding the things is a different story because it was kind of like trying to. I started to, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to be better about this. I want everybody to understand this. I started to say it was trying to understand the mind of a woman, um, you know, uh, but, uh, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go all the way there. It, it was, uh, it was chaos. It was boiling chaos, and it was very difficult for me to make heads or tails of it. And so, um, yeah, it was, it was tough. What if instead of trying to read his mind, you just we just get to a very safe distance and you use your mind to speak, do that thing you do where you message people and then he can message back, but we're far away and safe. Yeah, I was testing the range of that and I can basically do that from about there and I point at a tree <laughs> to, <laughs> to about there where that rock is. You see that rock right there and it's about 120 feet. You know, I have a question, Silas. Mm -hmm. Thus far, it seems that you've only entered the minds of people that are like, I mean, assumed innocuous. I mean, are you worried about like psychic damage, like entering a, an evil mind or? Well, I, uh, I, I won't say that I'm worried about it. I certainly won't say that it couldn't happen because um, I'm very new to this. And so it absolutely, like, there could absolutely be something horrible that happens. Um, and I get the impression that as I'm trying to sort through some of this stuff, um, that, you know, there are different parts of my mind that I can try to lock off um, okay. and, and that kind of thing. So, you know, I might can, you know, sort that out on the fly, but I will also say, that, um, you know, other than the creature that was down under, you know, the water, um, I, I certainly felt myself able to be aware of some kind of, you know, psychic mental influence and kind of ward okay. that off. So I know, I know what that felt like. I don't know if it okay. is all going to feel like that. So, so I feel like I, I, I would have some kind of defense but um, but genuinely no, like I'm kind of making this stuff up as I go. Oh, we all are. Okay, when 213 happens, do we want to appear ready for battle or do we want to appear trying to talk? Because I feel like that could possibly influence whether he'll try to talk with us or not. I mean, Honestly, I don't think he's going to want to talk. <laughs> we're going to try to seeing. make him talk. It's possible he'll appear and he'll have the same reaction hey, I be. Hey, 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 hey! What if what if we try to try to play an angle here, though? Like, go go with me. We used to do this stuff all the time on jobs. What if I present when I come out that it's like, hey, that's right, Talron. We got you off the train. Look how, you know, like we, we have a bit capabilities here and like we already were trying to, uh, you know, release Ivy. We might be able to release you too. Do you want to talk about it? Like, so, you know, try to like, at least make it seem like we've got, you know, control, more control of the situation than we actually do or something there. Why not? He might talk Ain't in it. is all I'm saying. So, like, basically come at him, like, look what we did. We saved you. <laughs> We're in the process <laughs> of saving you. <laughs> yeah, it's, and, and, you know, maybe we can at least pick up some things from that. Like, does he believe he's going to get released with the final mirror shard? Uh, you know, like, li little details like that we might be able to to pick out of a conversation like that. Honestly, just like, oh, my gosh. Honestly, if he shows up and sees where he is, and his first instinct is to t still attack us. I think that tells a lot more than anything else. So hopefully he he, he wants to talk with us because we can get some information. But I think if he's so uninterested in anything but being the bull, then I think that tells us something too. That's it. Hmm. All right. All right, so I guess we're doing it out here or, you know, Mag, did you have something that you were saying? Like, I felt like... I was just trying to think about the story that Ivy told us about Talrin and why he's attacking her. Mm -hmm. And what that final attack looked like. 
because there's something about that that feels strange to me and i i just i can't figure out what and for exactly. those of us that don't write everything is. down and don't have maybe as good I'm, memories as everyone. I'm going back to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so what Ivy told us was that um, that everywhere, every time they tried to cross over, that, that Talrin was chasing her and Julian, and Julian or or her and the scribe, um, this to save their lives. This, this scribe cut a passage to Erte. That's why they went to Erte. Not that she, as as a ruler, was trying to grab power. Still not sure on that part. Um, <laughs> there's so much in her story that I'm just like, yeah, this feels <laughs> weird. Um, uh, so they went to Erte. They, Julian agreed to help her come back and fight the other rulers. So they gave up everything and came back where the veil is thinnest. But every time they would try and cross back over, Talrin was there ready to to, to fight them. And she, um, that it, it was breaking Julian every time that, that these attacks would happen. Um, he set up the idea of crossing over while the train was moving, which is no longer an option we have. <laughs> <laughs> um, to throw Talrin off the scent, but it only worked for a minute. So we no longer have that option in our in our options. That that option is not optioning any. <laughs> it's not um, optional. Yeah, no. And within a minute, Talrin had the train engulfed in flames. Before Ivy could fight back, Julian threw his arms around her, taking the brunt of the attack. Told her he loved her, and muttered an incantation. When the smoke cleared, she was trapped in the mirror. Then the glass shattered, and then the pieces were missing. And so, then, it, sorry. Oh yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, and then if he gathered the pieces and set all this up as a way of making it difficult for people he didn't want to help, helping, mm -hmm. but you know, hoping that some of us from Erte would come along. Maybe I think I just am. Um... I have, I have no, a say it, say it. If there's something, because anything can be right or wrong. <laughs> so I, I, this is a, this is a gen philosophizing and, and theorizing. <laughs> I, this, there's a lot of that tonight, apparently. And again, if, if I am going too far out of character and too into meta, please kick me. Um, I am wondering if that shattering that happened, that Julian protection thing was not shattering the very essence of scribing magic. If that attack was not powerful enough or that Julian was not choosing to cut off that pathway between worlds. You think the, and that uh, the rulers would want us to reassemble that because they want to be able to get after one another again and but get they, after Air today. I think that's a reasonable thing to think about, but then they'd still need a scribe. And so unless Julian is somewhere... Unless, unless scribing was shattered into the pieces of the mirror. And the idea of assembling them again... Hmm. Or, and then someone becomes a scribe or Julian is still out there as a scribe. And I mean, maybe. Re reconfiguring the maybe. magic. Maybe. I didn't even think about that. Weird, I but that. weird. I'm, I'm, I'm giving up all of my theories tonight. It's, it's <laughs> that's. I think it's. Well, a, I mean, apparently that's what happens when it hits 100 degrees in LA. <laughs> you know what though? That makes what what makes me think that that might be true is if he's done all of this. If if my theory is correct, that this has been Julian all along, and all these missions, all these things are there to help us have the resolve and and learn how to wield enough magic he's not just helping ivy he's not just trying to reassemble the mirror he's assembling companions if, <gasps> if like the avengers like stylus said well if we are there and we put the mirror together and everybody shows up he, he's got backup and he or ivy up. Yeah. Ivy has backup, so he's making, he's helping Assembling. us. Yeah. Um, why so that not? way it's not What's just him. 
having to deal with Talrin because it's at least it seems like it's obvious to him that he can't oppose him directly. I have a question. Of the four rulers, did, did either tell us who was like the most powerful or were they all just equal? They, they were all, all powerful, mm -hmm. right? Equally powerful-ish, but we... Okay. Yeah, I mean, again, elements. you know, these are... Pivim only knows really about his own world and the stories that he's heard. Um, and as we've, you know, continued to sort of talk about... These are, you know, oral traditions, and they are going to be in many ways metaphorical, um, you know, um, fable kind of tellings of these things. So they are good for sort of intuition about these things, but maybe not super factual. Um, so, you know, he knows little bits from folk tales, but those are as true as the folk tales of Erte. And we still know nothing about the air. But the other thing about the idea of shattering the magic is we've all discovered new strengths about ourselves. And so if, if that was dissipated, I mean, this happened years before we got here, but we were the first ones to get into that room and to encounter that space. Well, right? we have wondered if as one of us is, is going to be a scribe or is a scribe or or if maybe the, we all are together. That's what I'm wondering is if it, if it was Zanet. if it was shattered. Well, if that's the case, Robin, you're definitely heart. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's so true. Definitely heart. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so those long. are things that are in my notes that I think are relevant for this situation. I have a suggestion, and then I guess we just bed down and wait. Yeah. When we put the mirror chart uh, tonight at 2.13, mm -hmm. let's say that nothing immediately happens and we get our minute with Ivy and we get a chance to ask her a question. I would like to ask her if she knows how to put the servant back together, because if she knows we're still at least close by the train and his pieces. It's true. But that's on the assumption that we get to ask a question and that something else doesn't happen. Does it come up? If also you're all okay with I want to ask her if she knows anything about the creature that could be going through the woods. Yeah, maybe if... Do you want to make a list of questions for tonight? Oh, yeah, well, we, this is what we need, like a little list of our questions we're going to ask today. Okay. Yeah. So, so just so I, I gather kind of what plans are here, you're going to stay here, strategize, have 213 here. Yes. Before going anywhere else, exploring anywhere else. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, so go ahead, uh, make your plans. Let's say, yeah, and just, you know, let me know when you're when you're ready and we can kind of fast forward to that time so take your time to do up but let me know when you okay. when you want it to happen we need ivy questions and talrin questions right <laughs> yes uh, <Alan laughs> talk to us. so i i put into chat we'd come up with that list a while ago i put yes. it into chat okay. it's that list and the only things i've removed are things that we got an answer to the last time because of her story so uh that's what we had left so Neb pulls out her, her little notebook where she's made all the scribbles and gone, it's chicken scratch, but mm -hmm. I can at least read it. So we had, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, that'd be my first question is, do you know how to put Steve back together? And if the answer is yes, that might be the whole 55 seconds is getting that information. But if the answer is no, what's the next question we want to try to ask? <laughs> we're all strategizing <laughs> if uh, i would suggest asking about that fourth ruler get some information about them anything that she might know even if it's just a, a name or mm -hmm. a disposition or a warning or yeah. something because you know you know ivy this the the ivy you know tall run and you know zola from lorelia which is 
um, Pivim's world. Um, yeah, but yes, you don't know anything about the fourth. So that'd be what I'd suggest next, is what do you know about... I guess it would be, you know, you, Thalrin, and Zola. Who's the fourth? Also, who's going to ask these questions? We also don't na know the name of Ivy's realm. Yeah. The uh, water realm. True. I ask, who's going to ask? I'm willing to be the person that asks. Silas isn't going to do it with his... No? Well, oh. Silas, if you want to be the person that asks, but I kind of figured you'd want to be focused on doing your mental thing. Yep. That is fine with me. Okay. Neb, you're up. So we don't do, uh, looking at this list, we don't need to know about the Castle Cap so much anymore, right? Because we're, or do we? Because we're here, I mean. Sorry, I cut out for a second. What'd you say? Oh, uh, the last question on the list is about Belcastle Cap. But uh, since we're sort, well, I guess we don't know much about Belcastle Cap, so never mind. Um, but we want to add how to put the servant back together onto that list, right? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the first question I want to ask. So that way, if she does, I don't know if we want to go back into the train, but I feel like it's worth at least asking if there's a chance of putting Steve back together. I mean, should we, we ask if the train is going to respawn? I think that'll <laughs> just happen if it does. I, um, mm -hmm. I wonder ahead. if she would know anything about the visions we saw of our loved ones. If that is a common occurrence or if it means something. That's a good question. I was going to add, so the next stop on your train journey that was, as well as where the last shard is believed, is the Farnshall Wilds um, would be the last place. Okay, so something we haven't talked about is that if that's the last stop, the last shard is in Farnshaw, and we think that there's a chance that that, whatever that creature is, is what caused the avalanche and tried to trap us here. Do we think that that creature is trying to keep us from getting the last shard? Maybe. I mean, just as much Do as any of the- we think we need to be rushing then to the wilds? I, I'm gonna say no, because I think all the creatures that have opposed us here they just come after us directly and i but this one of... didn't this one trapped us in an avalanche yeah but they didn't go after the they didn't go after the shard is what i'm saying they 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 tried to go after us so i don't know if anyone else can really go after those shards except for us that's true okay that's that's my gut Oh yeah, you know, I didn't even think about that. If anyone else knows about the shards but us. Because <laughs> we're the only ones in the room, right? Well, I mean, we've been assuming... Y you made the joke about the giant stone creature, Silas, mm -hmm. but we've been assuming that Steve is the servant. What if we're wrong? Well, then we'll find out when we ask about putting him back together, right? True. 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 Oh, there's so many questions. <laughs> I know. You got a minute. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay, so we've got two questions for Ivy. I honestly don't mm -hmm. think I think at best we're going to get answers to both of them and unfortunately if we do that means probably the do you know how to put the servant back together is going to be no. What's our first question or the first thing we want to try to talk to Talrin about? Okay, let's see. That's actually a good idea to think which one's going to go first, just in case we get cut off for any reason. I think we need to get Talrin's <laughs> side of the story. I agree! I right. think we've heard Ivy's side, we've heard Pivim's side. Let's see what Talrin can fill in, because mm -hmm. there's there's three sides of the story. Mm -hmm. Person A, person B, and what actually happened. <laughs> so, so The only way we're going to get to the what actually happened is hearing his side. So when so we basically asked ivy that question like how did you get trapped and we got the story i wonder if just asking you know after hey 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 don't headbutt me don't headbutt me mm -hmm. we're look we got you out of the train 
how did you get trapped in here so we can help? And then let him talk if he's gonna talk. Yeah. We did we have no idea how he's gonna react, so it, it might be as simple as what he wants. What are you after? Hey, I, I don't mind questioning Talron. I've had some experience with powerful Those horrible, made horrible of fire and people. smoke. Well, not that, but I mean the mafia is in a cup of tea also Ooh. i guess what i'm saying is i don't mind um I, I i don't mind trying to at least get a feel for what tyron is initially doing and yes try to end it with hey we're willing to hear you out and possibly help you if you'll tell us what's going on hey silas when you are listening in on people's thoughts if you ask a question, you can just hear like them thinking about it in their Asking head. Asking right? a question is the easiest way to know the answer when I am reading someone's thoughts. Yes. So if we ask, if, if I ask you, do you like pink unicorns? Then you're thinking about pink unicorns, you know, and, and I know your feelings about pink unicorns pretty instantly. Okay. So even if we ask him a question that he doesn't want to answer, it's very possible you'll be able to oh, pick yeah. out. Okay. So yeah, if I ask him, what do you want? What are you after? Now that is if I can make sense of it. Again, rolling chaos with Ivy anyway. So. <laughs> okay. Well, I think do this you, sounds like a plan. You feel... Yes, I feel good. Get the show so, on the road. What are, what are the questions we're going to ask Talrin? Uh, I'm just going <laughs> to... I'm I'm assuming there's going to be at least a few seconds of, hey, wait, 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 wait. Don't... Can you <laughs> stop chasing us? That, that the surrounding... And Neville will say this. Uh, you know, hopefully the surroundings will startle him enough and we can just ask him to... So hey, chill him out of it. Maybe. Who knows? In the ice then, and the snow. But then just ask him right away, what are you after? We're, look, we're trying to help and just see what happens. But we need to be ready if he doesn't want to talk. If he doesn't want to talk, I'm going to do a lot of very quick running. <laughs> yeah, just, is, is, is that our general plan there. to escape at that point? Instead of fight. <laughs> that seemed to work the last time. And fight or flight. Point. So which one are we choosing? I, I would choose. They can fly, Silas. Is he going to go after Ivy, though? Well, well that's, I think he goes after Ivy every night. Yeah, yeah. I, the other reason I think we should run is because it seemed like he was pretty well contained in that one car. Now that we're out of the car, the hope is he's still contained within a radius of the mirror, but we don't know what that radius is. So I think running to find out where that point is is probably a good idea. So we're just going to leave Ivy. I well, no, we'll come back. Hopefully they'll both get back into the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we should just have a couple of extra questions lined up just in case he cooperates and okay. we have the time to ask him just better better that than what we had on the first night with Ivy where we didn't budget it anything <laughs> well she did spend 45 seconds giving us a, a huge lore dump so but I think you're right no, that was you're... the second night the, the first night we we got up there to ask a question and didn't have oh we yeah we okay we, we just I... blew it I, I try not to think about that. <laughs> that first was on night. us. <laughs> yeah. We tried. Eh, that first night didn't really happen. So, so having have I think having a plan that we can just kind of go down the list if we have the time, even if it's two or three questions, like better better to have the options and not get to ask them than not have the questions and not get to ask yeah. them. I really okay. like your who broke the mirror question. Or I think we shouldn't ask that, that one overtly, over. though. I think we should holds on that one back back into it and that was that was that was a gen philosophizing not a mave philosophizing i mm -hmm. i just need to be clear <laughs> that was that was a player side theory thing mm -hmm. um i don't i don't know how much of mave might have gotten there but maybe yeah. not all the way okay so we've got what are you after with the hopes <laughs> that he then uh mm -hmm tells us the whole story yeah but then if we have more time what next 
so we want we want his side of the story. We want to know why you're yeah. And you can who, you tell us how who, you got trapped? Who in the are mirror? you chasing and why? Yeah, I guess I guess that might be an even clearer version of the what are you after? Is the who are you chasing and why? Mm -hmm. So Silas, so Silas is going to be the one talking to Talon, or is it going to be Nep? I'm going to talk. Silas is going to think, and the rest okay. of you are going to be there to pull my mm -hmm. butt out of the fire, literally. Yeah. All right. Well, that, that's actually really good because Neb, you're really unassuming, and he, it's not like you're. I, I mean, he's not going to be scared of you. You're going to like. It's not like he's going to see you and think you're cute. I don't know. You're the Thanks, cutest Rosa. one of all of us, I think. <laughs> Wait until I can turn into one of those big polar bears, just like, just like <laughs> Pivim. Eh. <laughs> I'll try like that the next time. Bear. Would you like a polar bear present before it starts this evening? Yes. For a quick escape. Oh, yes. I run fast as a polar bear. That's good to know. But yeah, if you can be ready as a polar bear, <laughs> then I don't have to be intimidating All between right. Farooz and you. 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. is approaching. Do we want to know do we want to know if about if they're keeping hostages in their realms? Uh, I think that's a later question. Okay. Especially since um, we have to assume that they haven't been back to their realms for a while. Okay, so who are you chasing and why? Can you tell us how you got trapped in the mirror? So we got two questions for each of them. How far back do we want to be from this thing? Because look, it's tick, getting, tick, well, tick. I don't know if it's uh, well, I have to be cover. within 30 feet. <laughs> well, then I'll be within 30 feet with you. It is very dark. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. I'll be a little right. bit further back, but I'd love to be supportive. And 30 feet back, essentially, you're all kind of grouped around each other. Pivim morphs yeah. into this enormous polar bear who stands at the back of the group, you know, steam puffing from his nose. Um, as those of you who still have powered watches or phones, watch the time tick by. 2.13. Talk. Standing in front of the mirror, about five feet from it, is Ivy. She's got on that twinkly blue 1920s dress, the tight curls, the blood red lips. She stands there cold, again, crying almost diamonds, you know, sliding down her cheeks. At the same time, you start to see a little bit of the smoke begin to emanate from the back of that mirror as it's leaned up against the tree. She looks, sees you off in the distance, takes a hesitant step forward, sees that it will take her, we her weight and sprints headlong in your direction. When she appeared, just because we were 30 feet yes. from the mirror, how far away is she from us? She was, like I said, like five feet in front of the mirror, so she's 25 feet from you. She's okay. now running directly towards you at a full tilt. Neb is startled I... by this and just says, we were going to ask, do you know how to put the servant back together? <laughs> As she gets closer to you, she looks at you with a little glint in her eye, dodges to the side, running around you, continuing to run as fast as she can off into the woods. Okay, don't, well, don't I... Don't worry, she'll be back. Well, either she'll be back or we're about to ask tall run questions. And I'm going to keep my eyes locked on the smoke coming out of the back of the mirror. Okay, she's running. You very quickly lose sight of her as she disappears into the woods behind you. Uh, the smoke continues to coalesce in front of you. At the end of a minute, a bull has formed within this smoke. You can't see it very clearly. In this dark, it looks just like a shadow. All you can catch is the very little places where some kind of ambient light comes by and he blocks a tree of some kind or where a spark, a light somewhere deep within him sort of highlighting his silhouette and you hear boom, boom. As okay, okay, hold on, hold on. sizzle. Yes, go ahead. Oh, hold on, hold on, see? you're outside we were hoping we could like have a conversation I start to uh, attempt to read his mind just surface thoughts or you want to go deeper uh, surface thoughts first and then okay, great. Uh, you know the next turn I can try to go deeper there's no he reason we fight lowers oh. his head down to the ground <laughs> 
sniffing at the snow uh, where Ivy once stood as he hears your voice, Neb. He sits up and you hear as simultaneously, Silas, you hear in your mind, Oh, but wait. I put in my ear, my earpiece. <laughs> yes. I can I comprehend languages better. Yes. Fantastic. Uh, Takes you a minute as you place it in your ear. And you hear him muttering, Where did she go? Tell me now. Robin, did you get that? I actually don't know because uh, it does take me time to actually. Uh, un unless, there, time. unless there's something, unless there's something else going on here, yeah. as long as it speaks a language, I do not need to know the language to know its thoughts. You, you, okay, so you can understand its thoughts. I can gotcha. understand its surface uh, emotions. Robin, and how long about does it take language. you to comprehend languages? Um, uh, finding it, finding it, finding it. No worries. Um, and then, is it something is it you can minutes? store? If you heard, if you heard it. Like previously, spiritual. could you remember and translate it later? Hmm. That's an interesting question. That's probably a DM. It does take okay. one action plus ten minutes, so that's okay. if it's a ritual. Yeah, okay. that's if it's a ritual. But, right. So what? But we're saying it's this earpiece. I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. I think you know we can kind of say because it's a magical item. Essentially, mm -hmm. is what we're kind of using with this. So you can cast it, right? And it's not a ritual. No? All right. Let, it it is a ritual. ritual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you've it prepared is, it, yeah. it's just an action. But yeah. I have it prepared. Yeah. So I think you oh, can yeah. do it. Oh, you, it's just an action. Yeah. yeah it's only okay. if you want to, if you don't want to spend the spell slot. You oh, can do the, yeah. I'll spend the ritual. The spell slot. Yeah. Okay. Thank fantastic. you. Yes. 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 Great. That's what I was hoping for. Um, so, mm. yes. So, um, yes. You hear as you put in your ear earpiece, and it takes just a minute for you to catch up. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, you're hearing Silas in your mind, the actual words, the rest of you are hearing this very confusing language as it as it washes over you. It feels just primal and primordial even to your ears. Um, something that is more uh, grunts and emotion and sound really than anything that makes sense. Um, even the language that you hear Silas and Robin, it feels again, these are these are feelings and sounds that you are able to somehow translate into a rough idea of of words, um, and yeah, you are getting. Where is she? Tell me where she's gone. Can you understand our reply? Silas says out loud. <laughs> Is Am what I you hear. Up any acknowledgement you are or... picking up <clears throat> enough, enough. Where, where, where? No. She does. He. He does not seem to acknowledge that he understands your English. Uh, how much time has gone by? Probably about thirty seconds. I mean, all right. Robin's a little tiff that she just ran away from us. So uh, maybe we just <laughs> tell him where she is and see if he can catch up. Si Silas just goes, I think she went that way and points in the completely opposite direction of where I am. <laughs> you point? Fantastic. Yes. Give me a deception check. Okay. I'd like to help with that. Yeah, if go I ahead. can. I you literally, see, he, you can. he points and. What is, what is your uh, charisma bonus, Robin? Uh, it's a plus one. A plus okay. one. Okay. Silas? Uh, that's a 24. Uh, with, a, with, with a one for with, 25? With her plus one. Uh, no, uh, 24 total. 24 total. total. Okay. So uh, you point, Robin, you point as well immediately. Like you, and I think the fact that he now goes, oh, they understood me, right? Like he gathers that you actually heard what he said. <sighs> he breathes deeper, but he's raised his head from the floor, no longer sniffing, and he turns in that direction. As he moves, you can see the steam and the smoke rising up from the snow with every step that he takes as he gathers up speed, disappearing into the darkness where you only see little wisps of fire. There's silence for about 20 seconds. 
wind and air and ice as you see literally Ivy being pulled backwards as she struggles against this pull from the mirror as she's pulled back, digging her heels into the snow as deeply as she can as she is pulled, screaming, reaching out for you back into that mirror. Simultaneously, dark smoke from around the edges pulled as you see this minotaur bull creature pulled back into the backside. As she's like flying by, Silas yep. is just going to be like, "You should have told us your plan as you were running." <laughs> He's just going. Like, <laughs> There's just desperation and absolute sorrow in her face as she reaches toward freedom with her last hand. Again, these diamond ice crystals dripping down her face as she is pulled into that mirror. Everything goes silent and dark. Mm -hmm. And that is where we will leave this episode of Children's Bear. Oh, I adore you all. Thank you so much, Josh players, everyone at home. Please remember that life itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. We'll see you at 2.13 next time. <laughs> oh, Good night.